Press effect. Press any key. So, Reggie. What's up? I've played this game. Yeah. I haven't played the sequels, just this one. I liked it. Yeah. Um, you haven't? I have not played it. Uh, so, nothing of it, it is... I mean, the only thing, I guess, uh, there's, a, there's a couple things to, to, I guess, it sort of introduce, but for the most part, like, uh, BioWare is, is uh, a company that before this, they made the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic games. Uh, KOTOR yes. 2, you saw me yeah. and V play on the channel. I saw a few clips of that. And, um, you know, those are kind of like, what it, we're doing Star Wars, but we're giving you lots of conversations, lots of RPG, like, mechanics, Western RPG mechanics, and a, a whole detailed, like, more than just swinging your lightsaber around sort of system, where you could, like, you know, form bonds and relationships with people, and, and, and a lot of fun detail in a Star Wars world. Um, so, we you know, at some point, they then kind of went on to do their own version of that i feel like that's kind of you know they're doing they're they're doing space adventure but um a little less science fantasy a little more science fiction um a little more politics mm -hmm. and definitely a little more uh star trek in the in the the flavor of like uh alien booty oh. <laughs> is available okay. I dig it. Uh, of all kinds indeed uh so that's kind of you know the 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 idea behind, I guess, where where the the franchise came from, but um, this first one is going to basically be a mixture between conversations, uh, where your choices matter and affect, you know, uh, the future. Uh, the future, right? Uh, it's going to be a mixture of that. It's going to be maybe a mixture of cover shooting, um, and like team tactics. So you're not just cover shooting, but like when you're, uh, depending on how you want to play, you're also going to be involved with like, you know, controlling party members to, to or c c commanding party members to do things and such. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a, a mix of, of all that kind of thing. Um, I do have like a good old iPad here okay. with some tips and That's all right. that, that stuff. I've got... Uh, the bits and pieces. This legendary edition has made changes as well that I'm not going to be familiar with necessarily, but overall, um, the game can play out in a lot of different ways. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to pick up the baton or start over once we move on, but either way, uh, I'm not going to try to avert you from disaster necessarily. That's fair. I think it's the kind of game where we can just let things happen. And if they happen, they happen. And it'll be okay, That's you know? Fine. It won't be the, like, oh, no, I lost my pyromancy trainer. Laurentis went down to the swamp and that. Like, it'll just be like, no, like, we can just let things go. Cool. All right. And it'll be fine. That's reassuring. So, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 definitely. Um, there is There are ways to handhold, but, like, I, I feel like it's the kind of game that you don't really need to do a ton of that. But there is advice about, like combat and your build and spending your points where it's like, oh, you might want to use your points in this way to get the best out of it and stuff overall. Okay, you know? yeah. Uh, is this the kind of game where people will be sad if I don't love or Mamoru the, their favorites? Yeah, <laughs> that will be the case for sure. Uh, make no mistake. Um, I mean, people are already like taking the fact that I said like we're going to let things go to be like, oh no, my fave is gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it'll be okay. I think in the end, we'll have fun and we'll enjoy it regardless of what any, what, any, what anything else is, is going on. So Okay, just so you know, people, this is a f work of fantasy, <laughs> a work of fiction. Any, any resemblance <laughs> to any fic people living or dead uh -huh. is merely a coincidence. Does not reflect my lifestyle. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Of course. This is a movie. This is a movie. We're having fun with it. Yeah, we're having fun with it. <laughs> and uh, whatever happens, again, like I'm gonna grab it for for two, but I we we'll, we'll see whether I continue or drop the baton or smash the baton to bits after launching it into space. You know. 
That's fair. Okay. We'll see. There's a lot of different ways we can go with it. But for now, let's just have some fun with it. All right. Uh, should I peek at the extras or just start a new career right away? Um, I mean, you can, we can take a look. I, like, this game... Okay, so, unfortunately, Legendary Edition is, one, running through Steam, two, and Steam's running Origin because that's the way these things go and we just okay. can't fucking... So that means, like, the, the, there's, and there's a launcher, so, like, four things are connecting to each other and this thing has been minimizing and popping up, so I expect there to be loading issues and, and cool. self-minimization things that we need we'll to look out for. Uh, but for now, I think we're okay. All right, let's go to extras. Um, oh, that's that's just stuff. It's okay. just basics. I think you'll be fine. Why would you put that under extras? Yeah, I know. Anyway, it's uh, it'll, it'll be fine. The graphics or the calibration or the sound. How's the sound? Sounds good. Sounds good. Let me check the controls. Yep, it'll be okay. You'll get you'll get the option to fine tune some gameplay options after you create a character. So okay. Oh, this is all keyboard stuff. Whatever, we'll figure it out inside the game. Let's just go straight in. All right. All right. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Oh, let's go. Secure connection confirmed. Hmm. Let's see. Covered N7 status. ID records are incomplete. This should work. Okay. Maybe. Oh. So, you can be John Shepard. You can be Jane Shepard. Uh, or you can customize further details of however you want it. Okay. I'm not to see customization. Customization is good. Uh, different voice acting uh, uh, f f for whichever way you go with it and uh basically different romance options as well okay um there's more freedom from mass effect 2 onwards from what i understand uh but like there is at least one like uh no I, you know what here there's, a, there's like a f actual list I'm, i have in front of me but whatever for the most part whether you pick uh, male or female you're gonna kind of get like different romance options that's the main thing to I keep in see. mind um and uh if you go further in you can do Please a lot more customization in. access your profile okay i personally really liked uh the fem shep voice acting Oh, that was a lot more. Warning. Data corruption detected. I pushed Please left, right, but it didn't move. Program. I don't know if I could have changed my name. Oh, okay. History. I can go back. You could go back. Please um, log in to your access everyone your calls program. you Shepherd. So your last name is Shepherd. I see. But uh, if you wanted to change your first name, I suppose that. that would if be I push possible. A, it's gonna move on to the next screen. I think it might be just typing it in. Okay. Uh, but for the but again, like your life. You, you type it. Type in my name. Okay. Okay, but I, I, I can't be Reggie. What would be a cool name for the future? C call me, call me Red. Red Shepherd. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh yeah, that baton is is going flying. <laughs> uh, anyway, everyone calls you Shepherd. All right. Red Foreman. Let's go. <laughs> God damn it, Kitty. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. <laughs> Did you seriously <laughs> call yourself red? Isn't it cool? <laughs> it's cool. All right, all right. The spacer. Both of my parents were in the Alliance military. My childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in my parents' footsteps, I enlisted at the age of 18. Colonist, born and raised on Mindor, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When I was 16, uh, slavers raided Mindor, slaughtering my family and my friends. I was saved by a passing Alliance patrol, and I was enlisted with the military a few years later. What kind of kid were you? Mm -hmm. Earthborn, orphan, raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth, escaped the life of petty crown, crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when I turned 18. Yeah, I'll be a spacer. Yeah? Yeah, I'll be a spacer. 
this this calls to me more than being a earth orphan and crime. You don't want your soul weighed down by gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Spacer it is. Um, psychological profile. Oh, during my service, a mission I was on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, I had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You sur- I survived while all those around you, around me fell, and now alone and left to tell the tale. Soul survivor! Early in my military career, I found myself facing an overwhelming enemy force. I risked my own life to save my fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible or odds. My bravery and heroism have earned me medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. Okay. Or... Uh, throughout my military career, I've held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. I've been called cold, calculating, brutal. My reputation for ruthless efficiency makes my fellow soldiers wary of me. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to me first. Soul Survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've overcome. This is like uh, too self-gratifying. And this is too edgy. Okay. So I'll go with Soul Survivor. Um, military specialization. So, so yeah. Um, classes. Now, this changes your gameplay options quite a bit. Oh. Um, the first three are pure classes where you're basically focusing on weapons with soldier, as well, the descriptions will tell you. But uh, the, the three types of things are generally, um, yeah, weapons, specialist. The other engineering is for um, tech, hacking, um, d- demolitions and things like that. And then adept is, of course, your... Um, it's, it's kind of your force powers, essentially. I see. Um, and then you can do the the bottom three are like hybrids of soldier engineer. Then you can do um, uh, with both aspect a bit, a little down, bit of both. Exactly. Okay. So the first three are pure, and then the bottom three are combinations, combinations. of all of the first three. Okay. So uh, you can get a better a better detail from the descriptions because it's not just about like your weapon, but like for example, soldiers can are the only ones that can use heavy armor. So that means oh. you have like more more defense. More, you're more tanky, exactly. Okay. So ideal for front lines of a firefight. Improved health. Can use all types of weapon. Start with the ability to wear medium armor and can use heavy armor. Engineer, tech specialist, using holographic omni tool that can decrypt security system, repair or modify technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons or shields, heal their squad, and they can only wear light armor and they specialize in in pistols. Adept, biotic specialist, upgradable implants, they can use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, disable or destroy enemies, and can only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols. Okay. And then the hybrids. Infiltrators combine combat and tech to specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use the Omni tools for cru- focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. Specialize in pistol or sniper rifle can wear medium armor. The Sentinels, biotic and tech, can use biotic abilities, advanced healing skills to defend allies, can disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. More efficient at tech and biotics than other classes, but at the expense of combat. Sentinels can only wear light armor and receive no specialized weapon training. So, uh, yes. And then Vanguard. The Vanguard, biotic warriors, can combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range to specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. So, uh, a couple things to keep in, in mind is... Uh, you can use before you were restricted with what weapons you could use depending depending on your class uh, i believe one of the uh, one of the updates now is that they let you use anything with anything however if you use the weapons that are specialized for your class you get advantages to them right so despite like if you use something that's not for your class you can use it but you won't be using it as well as the class that it's made for um the other thing is um in general if you're kind of like approaching the battle um, you know, guns are going to be, as you can imagine, just like doing damage and <laughs> taking it and, and taking it straight to the, you know, the enemy. Um, engineers are going to be supporting your squad and um, disabling shields and doing things like that. Um, 
and then adepts are going to be like crowd control you know um and like you know disabling like like certain groups in different ways and such and using your 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 powers to do that uh more than causing direct damage so um you know each whatever role you pick is like going to affect how how the fight is going to generally go for you i see i'm thinking either infiltrator or vanguard right now Mm -hmm. yeah cool yeah let's go infiltrator combat and tech abilities specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range that sounds good let's take this one confirm facial identification i can change so that's default shep (laughs) <laughs> or you can go through some de- some some uh, detailing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the presets are like a couple of preset faces, or you can just start uh, modification. If you want to start from a different base entirely, you can just go through cycle preset. Oh, dark, dark. Okay. Super dark. Super, super dark. How about this? Redman. <laughs> Literal red. <laughs> it's done. It's done. Ah, <laughs> uh, my skin ain't that smooth. Boy. Boy. Let's go with this one. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I should go wrong, right? <laughs> no, it's kind of weird. Personally, kind of weird. <laughs> personally, I think a f- literal red person <laughs> is, as you said, kind of weird. That is kind of weird. Um. Oh, neck thickness. Oh shit. Okay, hold on, hold on. What are we? A Washington sports team? <laughs> Real thick. What are we doing here? <laughs> Can't even breathe. We're trying to be decent. All right. The Braves are still cool. What about the Indians? No, no, no. Cleveland, did you change your team name yet? Reggie. Uh, face size. And <laughs> graze and move on. Graze. All right, all right. And move on. All right, no calling out no one. No <laughs> calling out anyone. <sighs> oh, I, need, I need help with this. Bones. Well, that's why I was saying um, cycle presets is a good place to start for like drastic changes. But if you're already like with the direction you're going in, then you know that's fine. What's the god on my cheek or oh, the bottom part? What help are you looking for specifically? Uh, I'm just looking at what this changes right now on the screen. Oh, okay, the bony parts. Ear size? My ears are not that big. Orientation? Flip him. Let's go. Okay. Joining MMA. Not to say it too many times in case you don't care about it. I'm just. You want me to go? It, it, to it's go just. Is it, but it's going to undo what you've already done, so you can probably still just keep going from here. You seem to be pushing for it. it, it <laughs> I can I can go for it. If it's you want. just in case you saw something that's a better basis for what you wanted. All right, let's just go with it then. That's that's all I was kind of going to go with. For example, like if you wanted to start from there, you all already right. have a lot of all right a lot of change, you know. Though the, to be perfectly honest, this game is old, and this is a remake of the old game. The faces are they're all kind of wonky. No, they're never they're never kind they're never gonna look great and even if they do look great watch as you jump to the next scene where a different lighting will kind of make it look wonky again but uh your hair though yep you have a cornrow style impressive 2005 is that? well this is a new re-release so, oh, but it's one of those re-releases where people are putting screenshots up and showing that like the older one looks better in some cases than the new ones with some of the stuff they did. So, yeah. Okay. 2007. 
eyes. Lighting makes a huge difference on uh, create a character. Yeah, that's why they let you turn your head like that. Change the background and stuff in uh, MMOs. I height. Uh, with oh the separation between mm -hmm. the eyes. Oh, that's mm -hmm. goofy. It's fine. I depth. Oh, how deep in my skull they are. Mm-hmm. Remember, your eye depth affects your Activision <laughs> King Blizzard score. Oh my god! <laughs> it's How's a secret, my chart looking right it's now? It's a secret value. It's off. It's 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 running behind. You're not allowed to see the numbers, but uh, modders have found ways to access it. Iris color. What color do you usually make your eyes in, in creative characters? Usually brown. Yeah? Yeah. But okay. like, we're, we're, we're... This is fiction. It's fiction. So you can do whatever you Let's want. Let's give me those, those Stephen Curry eyes. How about that? Okay. Jaw. Yes, I need to make that. Okay. Depth. Deep. Deep. Wider. Yeah, it should be interesting. I've only done a, a Femshet playthrough, so... Oh, so you're going to see new things. I'm going to see new things for sure, yeah. Mouth, yeah, give me those. But, but again, like, my memory from playing it way back when was is also, like... Like, I remember major beats, but uh, there's a lot that I forget, too, so... It's, it's more or less going to be a bit of a new experience as well. Yeah, yeah, DSLs. Are you yeah. going for oh, yeah. accuracy or OC? Oh, yeah, I, I like big loops. Of mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Always nice that you gotta do a kissy noise to make sure everyone knows what you're talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's good enough. Almost there, almost there. Nose shape. Oh, yeah, them thickies. Thick, thick, thick. Uh, this one or this one? OC or AC? <laughs> AC. Okay. Uh, no. Maybe that or that. That. Yeah. Though, I mean, our noses are similar. Mine's a bit bigger. I'd say. I'm not sure. I got my mom's nose. I got my dad's. Big nose. They're both big. <laughs> uh, let's go with that. Depth. How deep is your nose? Oh, it's not that deep. Okay, let's go with that. Hair. I would never have cornrows. You've never had cornrows? No. Do you just not like them, or is it just not... Uh, I don't know, not my style. It just, it just happened to not I, I don't think my, my hair would uh, allow for that. Oh, <laughs> silky! Oh! <laughs> oh, look at this Chuck Berry. New, the news part. anchor. <laughs> news anchor. Live at six. Um, you do... <laughs> you, you, you could pull off... You could pull off um, the actual, lit, like, like, I think, tight ones, if you wanted to, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but yeah, those are your options. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder what I would do with a Chappelle turn. characters. You know? <laughs> Literal Dave Chappelle characters. Possible as well. Okay, let, let's go Let's go with the, the, the Mohawk. Yeah? Blackhawk? Yeah. Blackhawk's fun. Once I'm, I get rid of my fro, I'm going to do some funky shit with it, probably. Yeah, it's fun get like my hair done like Buzuzima or something in Bloody Roar alright Mr. T vibes <laughs> look at this guy uh, not hairy enough 
All right, we'll go with this one. Eyebrows. Uh. I'll tell you one thing. Most of the people watching this have not made a shepherd like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm down for it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Facial hair color. Do I have salt and pepper in there somewhere? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Oh. Yeah, no, no detailing in that way. All right. Let's keep it like this then. A scar. Oh. Damn. No, no, I never get touched. I'm clean. In you're battle, clean? yo, unscuffed. But, but you're a soul survivor. Yeah, but you know. Nothing touched you? Don't touch the face. Okay. Don't touch the face. Is there a scar on this? No, right? I mean, there's two ways to go about this type of thing. There's either the way to go about it where you're like, all right, I've been doing some research and here's the plan. This is my OC. Uh -huh. This is what we're doing. Or there's just, <laughs> what do I And, uh, yeah, this looks cool. And both are valid. All okay. Right. This is going to be Red Shepherd. Red Shepherd. All right. Finalize. Uh, what is this code thing? Is that to, uh, Oh, if you want that, uh, if you want to carry, copy the, the this model forward in, right. uh, in future. Okay, let's finalize. Profile reconstruction complete. Red Shepherd, Spacer, Soul Survivor, Clubber Leg. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah! My boy is weak! Identification confirmed. Normal is fine. Mm hmm. Or level up. So, uh,. I think you'd prefer having that off because um, you get to specify what things you want better. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of things that if you just let the thing do it automatically, you're going to make your life harder. So, yeah, keep auto level up off so that you can choose it yourself. Uh, level scaling? Uh, level scaling. So this one's a little, it's a newer thing. And from what I could tell, basically the original game had you able to level up from 1 to 60 which is the cap, uh -huh. um, but it seems like it was pretty much impossible to actually hit 60 by the end. It seems like it was either very, very difficult or nigh impossible. Like, I think, I think that you pretty much got to like 50, high 50s if you did absolutely everything you could, okay. right? So the new, that's the classic mode I'm describing. So legendary mode is a newer mode where instead of going one to 60, you go one to 30. And that is more in tune with uh, Mass Effect 2, okay. which also I think does the same thing. And you can more easily actually hit 30 in this. And each level in when you go uh, legendary will give you more points, right? So 60. Uh, I one, guess the level ups are going to be more in space, maybe? Well, so yeah, exactly. So in the original, you were 1 to 60, and each one gave you fewer points. Uh, legendary mode, you're going to go 1 to 30 and each level gives you more points to spend. And with that, you will very likely hit, uh, if you were doing everything, you'll you'll hit 30 uh, uh, by the end. You, it's, it's a possibility if you do everything. I'll leave it on legendary. I think that's probably the best for the best. That's and the only other thing to note, I think, is that um, there are special perks you do unlock when you do hit 60 uh, on like your new game plus or whatever, but you won't get those on legendary when you hit 30. Um, but for the sake of our single playthrough, without any extras, uh, that makes more sense. Cool, yeah. cool. Squad power usage. Right. So your AI can basically either do nothing unless you tell it to in terms of like uh, using their abilities. Or you can have them just use defensive things. Or you can have them use defensive and offensive things. But the AI is not really that smart. So the more control you take over your uh, your commands for the team, the better. Um, so if you did keep it on defensive, that's okay. For now, it takes a little bit of like the battle load off your brain. But um, essentially, the more complexity you're willing to take on, the better you can fight. Okay. Um, but you have to... Control everything. Yeah, you have to... Exactly. Your tactics are going to be a, a little more complex. Can this be changed? You can you can change that later on. Right? Right. Uh, yeah. I'll leave it on defensive for now. 
And if the if the AI starts like using things in a way that I don't like, then I'll change it. Yeah, I mean, again, the 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 especially for, I know that like on like harder difficulties and and as things get more advanced, it's like when you are good at like commanding people, you know, and, and commanding the battlefield and such. Like, the, you don't want to rely on like automatic AI decisions yeah. and, and spending things that are bad or you know wasting uh, resources. So. Um, yeah, take as much control as you feel comfortable taking on, basically. Okay. That will be good. Confirming. Well, what about Shepard? He's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of his life. Oh, they know. Military service runs in the family. Both his parents were in the Navy. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis of this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it... Mass Effect. Higher respect. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. I hope you like Keith David. All stations secure for transit. Gargoyles. Requiem for a dream. Oh, damn. No? Well, I've seen Requiem okay. for a dream, yeah. Cool voice guy. Damn, that's very Halo-y. But it's not Halo. It's not Halo. <laughs> Hitting the relay in three, two, one. Oh! Fast travel. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. <laughs> Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. <laughs> First decision. <laughs> and I have all the time I want? Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I don't think that... Now, that will not always be the case. Oh, sometimes you have to hurry up. But as of right now... You have a chance to, to decide what you want to say, um, which is also uh, carrying over Kotorisms. You always expect the worst. Well, bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so what are we doing here? Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? 
I'm on my way. I heard that. Is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Fucking Joker. Joker. Oh, it's me! All right, press the start button to access the mission computer and view journal and codex entries. Codex entries provide additional but non-essential information about topics of interest in Max Mass Effect. So, uh, the codex screen is where the fun will happen. <laughs> like, for me anyway, because this is where world lore gets dropped in. Um... Full disclosure, it's a lot of reading because it's just like text about the setting we live in. Okay. But like, kind of like when we were reading through the stuff in Doom. Yeah. It like, it's a lot of cool backstory. Uh, that's what, co that's what Codex is going to be about. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm it, curious it, about it. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be worth our time to, uh, you know, pause, uh, uh, and, and go through the Codex every once in a while. Can I look at these entries? Uh, yeah. In fact, roughly twelve. Oh, thank years God! Ago, they're voiced. The Turians were invited to join oh, the Citadel Council yes. to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. Okay. So, um, just for the record, uh, yeah, so we're going to get voices uh, off for all the primary codex. The secondaries will not be voiced. And, um, again, they're all full of really cool world building. Uh, so, like, this is expected to be a, generally, this is a 25 to 30 hour game, give or take. If we <laughs> would uh, add a little bit of codex time and we might uh, fluff that up a little bit, right. you know. But, uh, again, uh, to me, I find it super worth it because I love world building. So, Turians... The race of uh, Nihilus, who you just uh, you just met there. Salarians and Asari. Yes. Okay. Who you'll you'll get to meet a All little right. bit later. And then Humanity and the Systems Alliance. The Alliance is the government and military of humanity beyond Sol. The Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government representing the interests of humanity as a whole. The Alliance is responsible for the governance and defense of all extrasolar colonies and stations. The Alliance grew out of the various national space programs as a matter of practicality. Sol's planets had been explored and exploited through piecemeal national efforts. The expense of colonizing entire new solar systems could not be met by any one country. With humans knowing that alien contact was inevitable, there was enough political will to jointly fund an international effort. Still, the Alliance was often disregarded by those on Earth until the First Contact War. While the national governments dithered and bickered over who should lead the effort to liberate Shanxi, the Alliance fleet struck decisively. Post-war public approval gave the Alliance the credibility to establish its own parliament and become the galactic face of humanity. I see. Dr. Michio Kaku has talked about how, uh, yeah, if intergalactic like relations was uh, diplomatic relations ever had to be a thing uh you couldn't even begin to start thinking about them unless the entire planet was considered a class one civilization and a class one civilization is like we operate as a planet together yeah that no, we're not there yeah no we're, we're screwed we're zero we're but zero. like we to get to that point like step one is organize yourself on a planetary level you know, uh, it's it's an interesting thing. So like yeah, if aliens come, we're we're kind of screwed. 
We're like of, we we won't look good. Beyond annihilated, dude. We're like, done. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the fucking the, the uh, Trek ships are whizzing by, Prime Directive in mind, looking down and being like, "Yeah, no, we can't. We we can't." We, we'll, we'll just fuck him up if we do. We can't go down there yet. And secondary, personal history summary. Oh, okay, that's my story. Both of my parents were in the Alliance military. Fair enough. Class Zero is no space travel whatsoever. We do have some space travel. That is true. That is true. But we're not one. We're not class one. We're like point... We're somewhere in there. Point two. We're somewhere in there. We've gone to on the moon. That's We've fun. got a camera floating out deep, deep, yeah. deep to the edges of the solar system. That's about That's as far as we got. Yeah. Uh, childhood spent on ships and stations. Transferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enlisted at the age of 18. First mission was an expedition to investigate Akus, a lush world on the outskirts of the Alliance space that had suddenly dropped out of contact. Arriving on the surface, my patrol found the settlement intact, but there were no survivors. At nightfall, the treasure, the treasure maw struck, mindless abomination of teeth and tentacles that rose from beneath the earth. Constant gunfire couldn't drown out the shrieks of my fellow soldiers as they were dragged down to a gruesome death. Fifty marines died on the coups. I was the only one to make it back to the landing zone alive. A monument on the planet commemorates the massacre, a grim reminder of the price humanity must pay as they spread out throughout the stars. Soul survivor. Never forget. Akuze. Yeah. Or Akuz. Oh, and a little timeline of little the Humanity timeline. and Systems Alliance. 2069. Nice. Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna. It is formally founded on July 24th, the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing. So, not the human real lunar landing. This is fantasy landing, right? Anyway. 2103, Lowell City in the Nine Nine Kasma. 1969? I thought it was like July 21st or something. Okay, well... No, I'm not sure of it, the exact date. It was July, but... It, 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 it lines up maybe, maybe approximately. It's, maybe it's not the right date that I have in my mind. Then fake, fake, fake lunar landing then. Uh, <laughs> Lowell City in Eos Kasma becomes the first... Commemorating the filming... <laughs> bye bye <laughs> The filming on the set... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Human settlement on Mars, Lower City, 2137. Eldfell Ashland Energy Corp. Demonstrate helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. Uh, 2142. Construction of Gagarin Station. Jump Zero begins beyond the orbit of Pluto. Yuri Gagarin, I guess. 2148, Space. the 13 Sentinels incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, translation of Prothean data leads humans to the Karen Mass Relay Systems Alliance found into coordinate exploration and colonization of extrasolar worlds. 2151, shipping accident at Singapore International Spaceport exposes downwind communities to containers of dust form element zero. Alliance begins construction of Arcturus Station. Okay, 2152, 20, 20, roughly 30% of children born in Singapore after element zero exposure suffer from cancerous growth. Systems Alliance begins settlement of Earth's first extrasolar colony world, the planet Demeter. Uh, Which is a god, an old god of yeah, exactly. uh, fertility, I think. Twenty one fifty four, Commander Shepard born. Hey, happy birthday! Uh, Twenty one fifty five, Systems Alliance occupies completed portions of Arcturus Station as a headquarters. Fifty six, some children of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. Oh well, I guess that's worth a cancer, right? <laughs> 2157, Turians encounter human explorers. First contact war, occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shangxi. Simurio. 2158, humans learn potential of biotics. An international effort to track element zero exposures begins. Roughly 10% of exposed children show some level of biotic ability. 2160, System Alliance Prime informed. And then five years later, humans establish embassy on Citadel. Reggie grabs the clipboard and starts dunking the children. 
<laughs> and Element Zero. <laughs> you know, but how come they don't? Have, they have cure for cancer, right? They've got a lot of things. They've going got a lot on. of things. I assume that anyway. Uh, Twenty one sixty five humans established more humans more existed. tech more problems. <laughs> you know, it comes it comes with as discovery. we advance new problems arise. It comes with discovery, right? Twenty one seventy a worthy sacrifice, he says. All right, everybody, keep that in mind as we go forward. Red Shepherd established. <laughs> <laughs> Batarian slavers attack the Alliance colony of Mindor. Um, 2176, Skyland Blitz, Spirits and Slavers attacked Elysium, the human capital in the Skyland Verge. 2177, Treasure Maws devour the Alliance colony of Akuz. 2178, Retaliation for the Skyland Blitz, an Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfa. <laughs> and the current date is 2183. Which means I am 29 years old. Right. Just young enough to start figuring it out. All right. But not too old that you've been grizzled into uh, inadaptability. Aha. Speak to the captain in the calm room. No assignment. We're good to go. Yeah. I'd like to remind our viewers that every new LP is a new world and a new setting. <laughs> and... Uh, no callbacks to no previous jetpack lore need be mentioned. <laughs> we simply appreciate the new things as we go into a brave new world. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. Cool, cool. You're looking kind of cool, Joker. What about you? You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. <laughs> All right. What about you? Just looking at me? Hey. Yeah. Nothing to say? That's okay, you're shy. I'll see you later. It starts. No, I can't open the ship and kill everyone. Hey, working well? Keep on working? Uh huh. Keep that sheep, that ship afloat. <laughs> Just <laughs> that kind of captain up in everybody's Commander. business. Looks like we had a smooth run. Heading down to see the captain. Hey. Yeah, he wants to see me. I'm not gonna get in your drama. That's not the kind of person. Want to find out what N7 stands for? <laughs> I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, sir. Maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. I can investigate. Yeah, so you'll see some exactly like like lines of dialogue lead to further inquiry uh -huh. and some are more like end the conversation and if i okay return to go back to the thing. precisely all right yeah and i don't trust nihilus i don't like turians in general it runs in my family damn my grandfather fought in the first contact war lost a lot of friends when the turians hit us um and you it'll become more like relevant later but um sometimes you'll see dialogue options that are like colored okay and those are for specific um options that are available based on uh your play style and like I choices see. that you can own that are only available to you because of what i've know, done before and, and whether you have enough points to to say it i see know? oh yeah by the way um space racism yeah, I can feel it. I hope you're down. I can feel it away. It's right going to come away. up a lot. <laughs> what do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. Well, you're useful. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. Ah. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper. Less chance of security leaks, too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. A cover? For what? 
Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated Special Forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. And I can go back to the lines that I've already seen with yep, the problem. Yeah, you can, exactly. Um, and like what you'll notice is a lot of the time your options pop up just as they're finishing what they're saying. Yeah. So that if you want to have a realistic flow of conversation back and forth, you can you can queue up your option as soon as he's done talking I and, re and respond. It's, 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 it's really good. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Okay, but that was a long time ago. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous <laughs> to have a Spectre up. on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Uh, I clearly didn't see everything, right? No, sir. But I can't figure and out what he's doing here. The lines Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated special forces officers in the service. Ugh. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. Okay. He's treating the shakedown run too seriously. Um, I pushed just A. I don't know if I should try. I don't know if it's button. a sequel only thing, but like I thought there was a way okay, to skip. Let, through let's lines. try to try again. What do you know about the stealth? Oh, I just X. know X. it masks okay. our location. The Normandy's the okay. only ship with this pro. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious the shakedown run is just a cover. Okay. You don't trust. I don't Nihilus. like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact I don't want to say that. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Do you have a problem with the captain? No, Captain Anderson is one of the... You don't send a soldier All right. like that on a well, do-nothing mission. You sound Dreamless like kind of a dick. Run too seriously. Something big is going on. All right, well, just do your job. Info's on a need-to-know basis, Presley. Just follow the orders you're given. Understood, Commander. Oh, damn. It's inspiring respect. You pulled rank. <laughs> I grew up on Eden Prime, Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. You <laughs> watch too many. Oh, everybody's like that. Well, not everybody, but at least these fools. Reggie's gonna fly this ship into the sun. <laughs> okay, so there's only the navigator I can talk to up to here. Dr. Shakwas. What up? What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. When do we get the freaking guns? <laughs> I've had it up to here with you! <laughs> Rules! Not until you tell me your name, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. Yeah. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual specter. What a clown. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. 
Basically, that they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Doctor has the evil British accent. <laughs> evil British, you say? Yeah, there's the good guy British accent, and then there's the evil one. You know. <laughs> Basically, North and, and, and Londoner. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime's one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's gotta be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Your safety's off, Corporal. <laughs> Put your safety back on. <laughs> what do you know about the Spectre? Only what I've heard. Spectres don't have any... Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. ATL. Okay. So sometimes it's like you can keep on asking or it returns you to the investigate to... Mm -hmm. to return to the thing. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. They're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds, just like you on a coos. Don't mention a coos. <laughs> Those are bad memories. No, that's fine. I'm collected. Show some respect. 50 Marines died there, Jenkins. Sorry, Commander. I I didn't mean to offend you. I I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? <laughs> you know, uh, I suppose now would be a good time to mention that since this is not uh, Star Wars, there is no Jedi and Sith. However, there is Paragon and Renegade. Okay. All right, cool. All right. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those CSEC grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. All right. I guess it's goodbye. The Captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Um, so, and just to, uh, to uh, add to that, um, the, uh, from what I understand, the other games in the series uh, might handle it a little bit differently, but in the first game, um, sticking with a path as opposed to mixing and matching pays off much better. Okay. Once you decide what kind of character you want to be. You, should, you right. commit to that character. Well, I'm a no bullshit kind of character. Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, the the, the flip-flopping will give you uh, less... Tepid results. Exactly. You'll get lukewarm water, which, as Jesus said, he spits it out of his mouth. <laughs> Sir? You want to be hot or cold? Sir? That's right. Sir. Thank you, sir, you say. Oh, salute! How about you? That's right. Oh. Hello. Damn. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. You like I'm the look? I'm interested in this world it's we're going badass. to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. 
serene, tranquil, safe. Yeah, the conversation Even started crime without me uh, of a symbol for your people, prompting it, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it really? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Wow, before Obama was even president. Look at this. Yo, Keith David, man. Yo, that's great. Is someone going to fill me in, Captain? We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some <laughs> kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. Oh. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, <laughs> too unpredictable, too independent. <laughs> Even dangerous. Yeah, okay. Where's the lie? Shit, you got me. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The Beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Because <laughs> if I take this, I might miss on this, right? Um. So it, it, the stuff on the right side is usually it's progression, progression, and, and the left side info? is information. Okay. Why would a Turian want usually. a human Thank you. Not, Not all always. Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. Oh. That was just a small data cache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we can learn from this beacon. What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Oh, like who? Sorry. The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. 
There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus system. In summary, uh, humans are a bunch of basement kings who are scrubs as an entire race. And when we discovered the ability to YouTube some tech from the Protheans, we started downloading that shit and applying it at locals. And holy shit, it works. <laughs> Turns out when you search for Japanese match footage, you find some real tech. tech. <laughs> and people go, what? What did you do? You can do that? Damn, son. Okay. Uh... Prothean match footage. <laughs> what if it's a weapon? <laughs> we can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Uh, Alright, I guess I'm ready to go. Alright. Yeah. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. I'm not going there. <laughs> Spoken like a brave captain. <laughs> True Spectre. <laughs> Commander Shepard. Shepard. What a Spectre, this guy. <laughs> Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> Tell Lego and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. <laughs> what the heck was that? Reggie running from alien explosions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> nope. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Serious dig in here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Oh, shit. Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Damn, what? Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck. You look cool with your helmet. Mm -hmm. Back to draw or holster my weapon. RT to fire. Sustained fire causes weapons to overheat. Yep, so more on that in a bit, but you don't have bullets, you have overheating. I see. What the hell are those? Not sure, buddy. Gas bags. Don't worry, they're harmless. Oh, okay. I don't need to shoot them? What if I push some buttons? A, B, oh God. What happened here? X. Whoa. Hold left button to switch weapons for your squad. Oh, wow. To change weapons, hold LB, select a weapon. Equip Storm. 
Yeah, if you wanted to practice your shooting, you could use the gas bags. Okay. And yeah, you did toss a grenade out there. Accuracy is better when you're when you're crouched and aiming. I see, and the meter cools down. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot of shots. Overheats pretty fast. But it's it's well, it's infinite shots. It's just time. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that gunshot was really loud. No! Jenkins! Overheat. Jenkins, are you okay? Oh man, that's rough. Leroy. Sometimes Marines die. The rest of us just have to carry on. Damn, that's cool. We still have to find that beacon. Aye, aye, sir. Damn, that's cold. Uh, pause for a second. Sorry. Go to options. Let me see if there isn't a way to just like get the sound effects down a bit because it's a very jarring. Yeah, not too much. Put it to like 75, I'd say. That gunshot is coming in really aggressive. Uh, 70 is good, right? Yeah, okay. How about this? 75? Yeah, 70, 70. sure, sure. Yeah. Well, let's see how that does. Alright. And as you can see as well, like the, you, you had like three different answers to, to pick that. And one of them is more neutral one is more you know yeah business and the other was we don't have time to bury sentiment. someone right now well, you decide medigel is needed to heal injured squad members omnigel can be used to bypass decryption and electronic challenges both can be acquired by defeating enemies and opening containers and since you are a uh, half soldier half engineer um, hacking is also going to be something that you do okay. so. so I can heal my squad by using the medigel uh, yeah it won't just heal me it will heal everyone um I think I think it's person by person but uh, again I, I don't fully remember you'd have to test it seems like it's a heal everyone thing Oh, okay. I can use the powers with RB. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, his health is fine-ish, right? Yeah. So, uh, exactly. You have shields at the top and yeah. health at the bottom. Um, and, um, you know, some things, for example, can, like, disable shields. Some things are, you know, some enemies will have high health, low shields. Or there's different combinations where the, the different abilities uh, come in handy. And... Um, the weapons, when they're loud, do they alert enemies? Are there like oh, sound effects? It, it, the loud, the my loud list was mainly just for the volume mixing type of no, thing. No, I mean like if I shoot someone and it's a loud weapon, will enemies see me from further or? Yeah, well, yeah. If you're, I mean, anything that causes detection, any, any firing would cause detection. I feel like stealthing is not really a thing in mo in the game. You're not going to be doing a ton of like snooping without detection. Um, I've got some burned out buildings here, Shepard. A lot of bodies. When you're not, I'm gonna check it out. I'll try to catch up with you at the dig site. When you're not walking and talking and having conversations, like when you're in go and gunplay's happening, it, it's usually because like the enemy's fighting you. Okay. So it's not it's not as much about like you know sneaking around the map type of thing. Okay. The squad screen lets you view your team's talent. Use the D-pad to select a talent or its rank. Press A to spend a talent point to gain a rank in the selected talent. As you gain levels, you will acquire talent points, talent points, and unlock higher ranks. Yeah. So, um, this is where a lot of you know 
uh, 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 guides and stuff have like this is where like the aggressive backseating can come in or whatever but uh, the main tip I would say is just that like um, focusing on making your way towards a given goal because as you go through each point each each line that you have access to uh, there's rewards stuff. working your way towards rewards is the most rewarding because you get that ability as opposed to like spreading yourself out and then I taking see. longer to get to it so I think you know uh, that's a nice thing to keep in mind um, and then as you do this for your partner for your team as well um, they it, it kind of depends on on who and what but like um, allowing your team to be a little more take a few more a little more in defense and being a little less squishy is generally also a pretty a good idea but for you for the way you build up yourself just kind of like um, you can do a lot of things but if you pick a, a particular target on the talent line um, that's a you know a fruitful way to go about it okay pretty interesting but Again, you can uh, you, you're going to get more point points than you usually would in legendary. So, you know, you can probably have a little bit more fun with the with whatever spreads you want because the pacing of one to thirty is definitely going to be really different from yeah. the one to sixty that I that I had. Okay, well, right now I'm thinking about like getting more health slash armor. As the um, beginning. Yep. The other thing too is uh, so you know take a look at each of these uh, ones that you have access to. Right. Yeah. I um, just scrolled quickly a bit. Uh, so, at the bottom, you have access to charm and intimidate as well, and these are oh. like dialogue options. Fudge. So points are also going into that too, which is, you know, I'd say it's 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 important to keep that in mind because if you want to have, you know, more dialogue options, then uh, you want to build out yeah. in one or two of those in one of those directions if you if you want to you know see the best results for it i see okay so keep in mind your points go in that direction as well well hopefully we get a lot of points then yeah um can i only put points up to the to the, to the threshold so far okay and as you level things increase Depending on how you, you know, I mean, investing in, in, in dialogue options obviously will, you know, you'll see when, like, you don't, you'll see sometimes, like, if you didn't have enough, but it would have been a place for it, you'll see the option and it'll be like, ah, you could have if you had, but uh, you don't have oh, it. Oh, okay, that's cool. You know, so you'll kind of see a bit of what you missed out in, in some circumstances. Charm. A bit of tactical armor, and yeah, okay, that's fine, right? That's fine. If you, um, if you're going to in charm, if you wanna, if you, the the more you stick with, you know, what you do, the the, the better your results will be. So, and then I have yep. two points for him. Throw. Mass effect field powerful enough to hurl object and enemies caught in the area out of the way. Unlock lift to throw 900 newtons, 1000 newtons, and master throw 1250. The barrier bolster shield with a biotic barrier. Description on easy, uh, decryption on easy objects. First aid. Reduces cooldown of stuff. Okay. Reducing cooldown gives you gives them more actions and you know faster periods of time. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Good to go. All right. Let's move. Did I just walk in the fire? Did it hurt me? Uh, I, is I, there fire damage? I don't know. I guess not. No. Level Level three three hazard. Hazard. Oh yeah, there, oh, there is. Yeah, okay. No, never mind. It gives you a little timer before something goes down. Use a D-pad to issue orders. Attack. Move to a point or regroup and follow me. Uh, 
right? So yep. they should be near me if I press down. Sending them into cover is a, a pretty handy thing in general. Watch yourself. Check your corners. Okay, and like, yeah, there you can see the enemy info pop up at the top of the Let's screen. See. Yeah. Take out those hostiles. Yeah, okay, good job, buddy. Damn. No jump. No. No crouch. There is a crouch. Aha, L3. And that stabilizes your aim. I see. Run! Oh! Okay, okay. 